Good afternoon, class, and welcome to Fundamentals of Public Speaking, Speech 107. Is everyone in the right classroom today? Yes, sir. Okay, great. So we're going to start by going over Chapter 4, which is about giving your first speech. So preparing, preparing for your first speech. And your first speech will be the icebreaker speech. And an icebreaker speech is a speech early in the term to get students familiar and comfortable with speaking in front of an audience. So the first thing you want to think about when preparing your icebreaker speech is to focus your topic. You can't cover too much ground in a three to five minute speech. So you want to make sure your speech is centralized. So develop a centralized topic. Think about what you want your centralized topic to be. Um, it would be impossible to cover, you know, like I mentioned, too much in just a three to five minute speech. So you don't want your speech to be scattered. So just develop one centralized topic. So be creative in developing your speech. Um, give it some time, just really think about what you want your topic to be about. Don't rush through it, just really be the, um, creative in devising that speech topic. You want to make sure you organize your speech. So every speech, especially in this course, is going to have, um, it's going to include an introduction a body and a conclusion. So you're going to have your introduction and then you're going to have three main points generally and then a conclusion. So the introduction is of course is the opening section of your speech. So this, this portion of the speech is meant to capture the audience's attention. It can be done by posing a question, making a startling statement, telling a story or opening with a quotation. So once you've developed your introduction, you're ready to move into the body section of your speech, which consists of your main points, the main points of the speech. You can organize your speech using chronological order or topical order. So chronological order is a method of speech organization in which the main points follow a consistent timeline, consistent time pattern. For example, if you were born in 1996 and then you, you attended elementary school at Rockwell Elementary School, graduated high school in 2012, um, and then went on to attend college, that's, that's considered chronological order. You may also think about organizing your speech using topical order, so focusing on the more important aspects um, of your life, such as your career aspirations or your goals or hobbies or your interests, personal interests. So moving on to the main point, which of course occurs under the body section of the speech, um, the main points are the major points developed in the body of your speech. You want to use transition words or key phrases um, just to indicate to the speaker or to the audience um, when you're moving on to the next point. Um, of course, transition help listeners just to keep track of your main points. So what are some, what do you guys think are some examples of transition words? Consequently. Consequently. Furthermore. Therefore. Therefore. Thus. However. However. These are all examples of transition words. Good job. So the conclusion is the final section of your speech, and the, the conclusion should end the speech on a very strong note. So once you have clear structure, once you develop your subject, your thesis, your, um, your overall topic, it's time to work on the delivery of your speech. So what methods you believe you should use to deliver your speech to your audience. And for this first speech, we're going to focus on using the extemporaneous method of public speaking. So an extemporaneous speech is a carefully prepared and rehearsed speech that's presented from a brief set of notes. So it's not reading straight from manuscript. This is, so you're not, you're not reading from memory. You're not reading from paper. It's a carefully prepared speech where you could have, for example, for instance, you could have 
um, note cards in front of you. You're not reading from your note cards. You may just have a word on each note card just to indicate to yourself when to move on to the next point. And you're also making, you're continuing to make eye contact with your listeners. So that's the extemporaneous method. And it's also the preferred method. Um, a lot of professional public speakers um, prefer this method, prefer using this method of public speaking as well. It comes to all very smoothly, naturally, and effortless. So these are just some general tips when presenting your speech. Um, when it's your turn to speak, you want to move to the front of the room and face your audience. You want to assume a relaxed but upright posture. Plant your feet a bit less than shoulder width apart and allow your arms to hang loosely by your side. You want to arrange your notes before you start to speak and then take a moment to look over your audience and smile. Always remember to smile, that's very important. Um, you want to make sure you establish, you want to use these tips generally to establish um, good rapport with your audience. You want to make them feel, to feel comfortable with you. Making gestures, uh, uh, you know, using gestures in your speech, which are motions of the speaker's hands or arms during the speech. Um, using gestures is very important as well. Can anyone tell me why? Give me an example of why it's probably a good idea to use gestures. Does anyone have an idea? Gestures kind of help you, if you think about it, they kind of help you to kind of keep your thoughts flowing. It helps you not to feel as nervous. If you're just standing there like a statue, you may, of course, get more nervous, but if you're using those hand gestures, they just kind of help you to get your point across. Always make eye contact, of course. So we've talked about eye contact several times this semester already. Um, the eye contact, of course, is direct visual contact with the eyes of another person. It's important to make eye contact. Um, you, I will be grading you guys based on eye contact for this first speech. So just make sure you're aware of that. Um, I'll also grade you based on your enthusiasm. You know, I'm, I mentioned, mentioned gestures, use hand gestures. Make sure you are being clear. Make sure you're speaking loud enough where your audience can hear you. I will grade you guys on all of these things. Also signaling your conclusion. That's, that's going to be important for this speech. A lot of, a lot of times um, in previous semesters that I've taught, this course, I've had students to forget to signal their conclusion. A lot of times they'll just say, well, that's it, and they just you know, walk off and take a seat. But you wanna make sure you signal your conclusion. That's important. It's, in it's, it's important to let the audience know once you've finished. You know, so have close your speech with a final thought. Um, just to discuss some ways you might do that, you could conclude your speech with a quotation. You could restate your, your points. Um, you could conclude with a dramatic statement, you know. Um, so these are just a couple of ways you, could, you might go about doing that. You just want to make sure you end your speech with a bang, not a whimper, so to speak. So I mentioned voice expression, vocal variety. So you want to try to use your voice as expressively as you would in normal conversation. Concentrate on projecting to the back of the room. So try to, you know, speak loudly enough to where the entire, your entire audience will hear you, not just people sitting in the front row. And fight the temptation to race through your speech. You want to make sure you get that three to five minute mark, of course, but also if you're racing through your speech, you may get more nervous. So try to fight that temptation. So that is, that concludes the first chapter, chapter four. Does anyone have any questions for me? Yes, sir. How long will our speech need to be? Your speech will need to be between three to five minutes. All of them? This particular speech is required to be between three to five minutes. Your, your next speech will be 
the special occasion speech, and that's required to be at least a minute and a half long. Your next speech, which I mentioned is a special occasion speech, is more relaxed, it's more laid back, um, so you, you have more leeway to be more creative and just kind of more relaxed about how you would want to present that speech. Your informative speech is going to be your third speech, um, and that speech is also required to be between three to five minutes, and then your persuasive speech is required to be between five to seven minutes. So you will have four speeches um, this semester. You are allowed to drop one speech grade. So that is in, that works in your favor. Um, and you will also, we'll also have a couple of um, discussion, discussion assignments. We'll watch a couple of TED Talks throughout the semester. And we will also, I'll also show you guys a couple of good examples, what I believe are good examples of, you know, good icebreaker speeches, good informative speeches, persuasive speeches, and special occasion speeches, just to give you a better idea of how you should go about preparing for each speech. Each speech. Do you guys have any more questions for me? No, sir. Okay. Um, oh, I forgot to mention the final exam. So you guys also will have a final exam. It's going to consist of 50 multiple choice questions. Um, and it's also going to consist of five bonus questions, also multiple choice. You will receive a study guide um, for the final exam and it will be cumulative. So it's going to consist of everything that we covered throughout the semester. And next week we will, dis we will discuss um, chapters one and two, and then we'll delve into chapter six, um, which is about audit analyzing your audience. So does anyone have any questions for me? Okay. Well, I've enjoyed having you all, you guys today. Um, I'll see you guys tomorrow. Bye, Mr. Willis. Bye, you guys take care.